Yo, what's up, guys? This is Dan Boy, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. I am a little pissed off that I just found out about you, because your stuff is hot. Dan Boy, how you doing, man? How you doing? I'm good. Good to meet you, dude. We, and, and, and it's awesome that we're both kind of like grew up in that like emo kind of world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, still li- I, I'm, I still live it. <laughs> Same here, man. Same here. That's like, I mean, right here, Fever, 333. Oh, yeah. Like, I still live it 24-7. It's this shirt. There you, go. Here, you know? yeah. there you go. So let's talk about that new single, uh, I'll Be Fine, that just dropped. Um, this is, you tried something different, man. You hit some falsettos on here. I feel like you, you kind of challenged your singing um, a little more with this track. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely not reggae, too. <laughs> a lot of people think I'm just doing reggae, but yeah, I'm just, I'm doing a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of inspired the change in this track? Um, I don't know. Just pop music, just music in general. Yeah. Yeah. Now this, this track and the previous track are the ones that you kind of started to like bring out your vocals a little more. Um, when you went into the studio to create these tracks, like, do you feel like you got challenged a lot more because you were trying new things with, with, with the way you were singing? Um, actually, like, I'll be fine as far as singing. I mean, the falsetto thing is there, but, like, mm-hmm. it's actually not that hard to sing. But definitely a uh, challenge, like, pushing different sounds right. on it, you know. Now, tell me a little bit more about, like, your music. Like, what kind of inspired, like, the reggae type of vibes? Like, what kind of inspired the way that you sing your your material? So the whole, um, for how high reggae, um, I really sit in Hawaii, and Hawaii's really big on reggae, so that's why mm-hmm. I kind of went that route with my first song right um but as far as styles like i i try and pick it from everything like again you know i listen to alternative emo and right. um actually a lot of the stuff i'm making now like there's a lot of alternative like influence in there mm-hmm. you know with pop and you know i don't know just try to do different things all the time like do you do you are you one of those artists that when you're working on new material you stay away from listening to music because you don't want to get that kind of influence or do you prefer listening to different styles of music just to like kind of give you a vibe of what you're going to create? Um, I try and do both. I try not to have like a set way to do something. Like, mm. you know, I listen to music every day, so of course I'm getting influenced. But sometimes when I'm in the studio and I'm working on this, then I'll try and just focus on that. But sometimes, you know, you need inspiration from other things. So I'll go and listen to something else. Right. You know, I try not to like um, push on creativity i like to like make something real quick and then move on mm. so yeah. when you when you started working on i'll be fine um what kind of like sparked this this track so i actually was in hawaii <clears throat> and i was actually really sick <laughs> and i had um i actually wrote it on the guitar first mm. and then when i came back to la i uh, worked it with a producer and i don't know we just kind of like we made it really quick which is kind of crazy yeah like in one session and um yeah, it was just it's a it was just like a really easy song that kind of just happened. Like, do you feel like the acoustic guitar is like important for you when you when you're creating music, or does it change within every track? It it changes. Like, um, I play guitar. That's my main instrument. So yeah, like for I'll be fine. Like I wrote it on the guitar first. Um, it it all. I some songs some like I try not to use the guitar because like I kind of get in a mode when I'm playing the guitar. It's like you know right. the singing and we'll kind of be focused on that. But it it depends though. Like. You know, again, like I don't, I play a little piano, but yeah, guitar is my thing. So I always have the guitar in the session, but I try not to always use the guitar as a, I, for me, it's a crutch. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. Now, what about like producers? When you, you mentioned earlier, when you come out to LA to like create the song, like, yeah. um, do you have specific producers you work with? Or are you still trying to figure out the, the, the style of producer that you kind of want for your material? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I don't have like, a designated producer that'd yeah. be that'd be kind of lit but um no i've just been working with a different bunch of producers like and i'm still always looking for producers you know what i mean um i think right now my career it's kind of young mm-hmm. in a way you know um but i always know like what i want right and um i think it's kind of dope to get different sounds and like styles from other producers you know what i mean because right. like you know, literally everyone is different you know, which is kind of lit. Right. Now you have, you know, you have the track How High that kind of like basically puts you out there in, in the music world, like got, got everybody's attention. Like what do you think it is about How, how High that really gravitated to the world? Um, I don't know. Um, you know, it's, it's a reggae pop song, yeah. um, more so on the pop side. And I think, you know, for Hawaii, it, that's, it kind of stood out because mm-hmm. um, a lot of reggae in Hawaii is very like 
islandy you know which that song was different right. um but i think when it crossed over to top 40 um it, like nothing sounded like it mm-hmm. you know especially reggae like there's not a lot of reggae on top 40 right now yeah, exactly. it's a lot of reggae tone but right. not not a lot of reggae so i think that's why it kind of stood out you know do you do you feel like uh reggae could be something that could eventually come out to the top 40 um or do you feel like it's just one of those genres like the like emo and pop punk where it's just like they basically live in their own lane like it's it's uh, it's gonna forever be in a sense underground uh well reggae's been around for a long time you know since bob marley and before him um and if you've seen like like pop top 40 like you know you had magic with rude and you know rihanna had reggae songs rihanna's new album's all reggae Mm -hmm. um reggae's kind of a it's so different from every genre because it like for pop music it like goes in and out right like you know and like i feel like with reggaeton and you know more latin music that it's probably going to get bigger and bigger but there is its own world too which is kind of crazy right exactly and like there's different types of reggae there's like jamaican reggae san diego reggae hawaii reggae like yeah it's it's a big yeah so yeah, right now, as you released a few tracks for this year, um, where where are these tracks like eventually gonna like be placed? Are you trying to like work on an EP, an album? Like, are you trying to just do singles at the moment? Um, so I have an EP, and I, I pretty much finished it. Unless if I mean, you know, make better tracks, yeah. but um, yeah, we're probably just gonna release singles until the EP. Right. Yeah. And you know, what do you feel has been the biggest challenge in creating this EP? Creating it. Um, I don't know. It's been kind of easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only hard part is like choosing songs because okay. like, I have I, I'm always in the studio. So like what's best fitting for the project, you know, Now you did give us like different kinds of styles and music uh, on the four or five tracks that you've released so far. So uh, as you're creating this EP, like how are you picking and choosing like what kind of styles you want to give out to your audience? Uh, the, so the songs I have in the EP, they're all kind of different, which is kind of yeah. crazy. Um, like I'll be fine might be on there. Um, how high is co- of course gonna be on there and the other songs like i have a song that's like indie alternative pop nice. and then one song's like r&b but i mean they kind of like sound similar sonically because i'm on it mm. you know so um i kind of like don't want to stick to like this is my sound like, you know yeah. it's like it's almost 2020 it's you know right yeah i right. don't know and it's pop like you know if you listen to Ariana's new albums are they're all over the place, you mm-hmm. know, it doesn't have to really be like the same, right. you know now, now I did like that, you know, on this on this new track you like I mentioned earlier you Kind of hit a little bit more of those falsettos um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, During the song like is that something that was difficult for you to like learn how to do or is that something you just naturally Were able to hit those notes oh, the falsettos yeah. actually easy <laughs> Yeah, My voice is kind of yeah, it's, it's kind of high. Yeah, um but yeah, you know, you just I didn't notice that you mentioned the falsetto stuff. Like both the songs I released recently, yeah. like they're fal- they have falsettos in it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I never so you don't you really don't think about it. You just hit no. the studio, whatever you're feeling, and you you make it happen. I just yeah, I just I just make music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like it's funny, but like I I try not to consider myself a singer. Mm. I think it's kind of cheesy. It's kind of too late now, man. You're <laughs> you're, you're already putting it out there. Yeah. Oh, and like like you know, just kind of like it, yeah. you like I play guitar, but I don't like to call myself a guitar player. Like right. I don't like the title. It's right. Kinda, you know, because like even when I sing, it's not. Some songs is kind of like kind of on the raps, you know, mm. rhythmic rap kind of mm. stuff. So it's just I'm just making noise, I guess. You feel like it just adds pressure when when the title comes into play. I just think there's like a minds, not a mindset, like an idea when you tell somebody, oh, I'm a singer, and they just get this like idea of like what you are, right. and I don't like that. Right. Yeah. Now, you know, the, the tracks are out now, you're currently working on that EP. What are the plans for the next few months? Like, do you have any summer plans going on? Um, yeah, I mean, probably play more shows in LA, probably outside of LA, um, pushing How High on the radio, mm. releasing more music, um, and also like, I write for other people too, so just kind of get songs placed and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So when you're writing for other people, like how do you pick and choose if it's going to be a track for yourself or if it's going to be like a track for someone else? Uh, I just know. So, <laughs> I just know. I'm like, right. yeah, I'm like, well, I mean, if it's fire, it depends too. Like, yeah, it depends. Like if I get a chance to work with a big artist and I have like a really good song, I'm like, I'll take, you know, the sacrifice, like, you know, just to move me up. Like, um, right. but I feel like the stuff that I'm making is very specific, like, to me, mm. you know? 
but I don't know. It's just kind of like a game that you have to play. Like, what's for me? What's for right. the other person? You know. Do you feel like writing for other artists has kind of impacted the way that you write for your music in any sort of way? Yeah, one thousand. I mean, um, I started writing for other people like three years ago, mm. like really taking it seriously. And when you're writing for another person, it's like a different mindset. Right. You know, um, it's similar because like. I don't really approach songs personally, like, oh, you know, she left me, and you know, I just write music now. I mean, and of course, personal things would go in it, go into it, but I think when you start writing for other people, concepts and stories and ideas are you approach them differently, mm. which I think helps any writer. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Well, dude, thanks for hanging out with me. I I got to catch a live show, a live show, because I love listening to the tracks. It's, literally, it's been on my Spotify like over and over and over again. So definitely look forward for the EP. For those fans that are not too familiar with you, why did you choose music as your career path? Uh, this has always been there. <laughs> yeah. I cook too. I used to cook, um, you know, like my day job back in the day. But I don't know, music's it's like one of the only things that makes me happy. That's it, man. Yeah. Well, congratulations with the music. Thanks for hanging out. You guys be sure to check out Damn Boy here on Front Row Live, and thanks for watching.